joined here by Dale Banks from Dimplex, and we're going to do a little uh, chat here about retrofitting a heat pump and uh, connecting to smart rads. Now, um, Dale, the first thing, obviously, starting with, we're Sorry. talking about the fabric of the building and so on. How important is it to assess the fabric of the building? I think with any installation of a heating system, the fabric and ventilation losses are important, and to increase the thermal envelope is an important consideration. You can see here that we've got different levels of of loft insulation and it will be an important consideration to update and upgrade any of the ventilation and fabric losses. We can see that the principle of a heat pump and a boiler are readily the same. A gas boiler uses uh, a hot gas through a heat exchanger that transfers energy then to the circulating water, whereas a heat pump uses a refrigeration cycle to create a hot gas, which is then passed through a plate type heat exchanger that transfers the heat energy into a, a circulating water system. So there's very, very, there's a lot of similarities between the two. Now, obviously, we haven't had time. No, this is a, a, a standard hot water cylinder. The cylinders themselves have to be specifically manufactured to match the heat pump. A, a standard hot water cylinder would only attain a, a value of around 35 degrees Celsius. This cylinder is a stainless steel product. It's got high levels of insulation to reduce the standing losses from the product. And the actual physical coil size has to be bigger because we need to get the heat transfer inside the cylinder coil. The heat pump is susceptible to tripping out under a high pressure fault, and, and we have to ensure that the coil volume is matched to the volume of water in the cylinder. To commission in the system, it's not a straightforward replacement of a boiler. You've got to think of all different applications. The, this is an air source heat pump product. You can see it's outside the envelope of the building. You've got to consider the foundation that it's mounted on to start with. The principle of operation is virtually the same. It's a hot gas transferring heat energy into a plate type heat exchanger. There you can see at the bottom we've got flow and return connections from the actual product. Same as on a boiler, you would have flow and return connections. So on the back of the heat pump, we have some isolation valves, and they are just two flow and return connections. So very, very similar to a boiler. You can see there's two isolation valves that's been built into the product, but that's just for replacement or drain down if there was actually a problem. The actual foundation that you put the unit on has to be specifically designed to ensure that the unit can drain during the period of a day. It will periodically go through a defrost. The air contains moisture, it freezes across the evaporator, and we have to create this, this rain drain or soak away. See, out of the product, we need to run it at a low water flow temperature. As we reduce flow temperatures within the heat pump system, its efficiency increases. So for every one kilowatt of electrical energy, you'll get more heating energy into the system. So if we was to run a standard radiator at 35 degrees Celsius, it becomes more like a wall space heater. It can be up to 6.8 times its physical capacity to meet the heat loss from that room. So by introducing other types of heating mediums, or heating systems, I should say, then the physical dimensions and the size of those units come down. And what would you say are the key benefits of the smart rad? You know, what are the top benefits? Well, this is designed specifically to work with um, heat pump systems because it will work at low water flow temperatures, as low as 35 degrees Celsius. The other benefit is it will work up to higher flow temperatures. So the capacity of this unit is based on the delta T across the unit and the flow and return temperatures. So at water flow temperatures at 35 degrees, it enhances the actual capacity of the unit. The unit will have a higher output, it will also have a higher efficiency. So it's beneficial in that way. It also has a very water, a low water volume inside the unit. So its, its thermal mass is very, very small. The product itself is relatively straightforward to install. I do appreciate it needs an electrical supply. The supply itself is only a very low wattage supply, so it will feed readily off a ring circuit or a radial circuit. And each heater would need its own electrical supply. There's a tangential fan in the bottom that's drawing air through the base out across the, the heat exchanger. The fan itself has three speed settings. The smart thing about it, why it's called a smart rad, is once you've set the temperature sensor on the top of the, the unit, it will vary the speed of the fan. It doesn't run at speed three or speed two. It will ramp down as it approaches the room temperature and enhance the heat transfer into the building. But with with regards to commissioning or any heat pump system, some of the key things to remember are the removal of air from the system. Built into the radiator at the top, there's a small air vent. We must ensure we remove all air out of the system. 
in a, in a radiator circuit. On the top of this, this, this cylinder, this is a buffer tank that's been built into the actual domestic hot water cylinder. On the top of there, you can see that there's a, an air vent so we can get all the air out of the system to prevent faults from occurring. We've got an air vent at the highest point within the whole of the system as well. So it is absolutely critical, isn't oh, it? Oh, removal of air is absolutely crucial to commissioning the system. In the past, I, I believe some plumbers, plumbers have found it, the hydraulic design of the systems to be quite complex and quite complicated. This system uses a simple S-plan design through a wiring center, nothing that a, a plumber won't have come across before. But one of the other key points is flow. Volumetric flow rate through the product is of, of crucially important because if we don't maintain the flow rate through the product, like a boiler, it may trip out on overheat, a heat pump will protect itself and shut down. So within the package that we've put together, we have a flow meter, we can ensure that when we push the handle, we do have the right volumetric flow through the product. That should then alleviate any pressure faults that we get within the system. And it is a crucial piece of kit. Yeah. One of the other important things is to ensure that once we've filled and flushed the system and we've fetched all the air out of the system, that we use a suitable type of inhibitor and we prevent any solid bore materials passing through the product. Because if we block the product, then the flow rate will fall and we'll end up with problems. Just step this way a little bit so we can get it on the camera there, Sorry. into the light. That's it, stop there. So on the back of the actual unit itself, now with our kit, we supply a, an inline filter. This just has a mesh filter bowl in the bottom. You can replace that in there. There's a little circlip goes in there to hold it in place. That then goes on. Simple. And then when we all put the handle back in, it's now in direct yeah. line. So the pressure loss across that valve is vastly reduced by doing it in that method. So again, we can maintain the volumetric flow rate through the product. So as a, as a package kit, it comes with everything that you really need to so install. So it does, it comes completely Yeah, solved. we do several packages that come with the hot water cylinder and all the inlet group, the valves, the controller, a relatively straightforward controller. People have seen similar to things on air conditioning yep. units. Yep. So very easy to program. Settings menu, functions menu, pretty Brilliant. much it, it's up and running. Okay.